Hello, I'm John Sargent, back with another video chat. Change is in the air. The mood has altered. The lockdown has been eased. People look different. They've had their hair cut. Women seem younger, men less ragged. Pubs and restaurants have reopened. The shutters have gone up. People's inhibitions have come down. Drunks, we're told, don't respect social distancing. Young men on motorbikes are noisier and more reckless than ever. There's a general sense of relief. Inevitably, our thoughts have turned to holidays. Over the years, I've come to the conclusion that there is no such thing as a simple holiday. I rather envy those Americans wearing what looks like beachwear in the middle of a city, explaining that they are just on vacation. If only holidays were that simple, I found them rather complicated. Some people believe that proper holidays are an art form, and it's true they require a certain amount of talent. There are those who take to the subject naturally, and those who somehow never get the hang of it. A good holiday has to feed your imagination before you set off, and looking back, has to remain happy in your memories. Expectation and fulfilment have to be part of the deal. Getting away from it all is the driving force, and that's one of the many reasons why mixing work with pleasure on holiday can be so frustrating. It's much easier to concentrate on one or the other. As a BBC reporter, I was sent across the world to places which in more restful times, I would have loved to visit. But going sightseeing in the midst of the clamour and turmoil I had to cope with was inappropriate and uninviting. One of my friends was appointed Middle East correspondent. When I met him two years later in Cairo, he told me he had never got round to visiting the pyramids. He concentrated on his job. Here's a paradox. Even during occasional work as a travel journalist, I can find it difficult to conjure up the old holiday magic. I worry about my copy. Will it make the reader laugh? I was sent to Cuba last year by the Daily Mail, and at a zoo, I was given some meat to throw at a crocodile. At last, such a relief, something funny. His jaws snapped with a devastating crack, I wrote, like a clap of doom. In the wild, that sound could be the last you ever hear. My wife Mary, who often comes with me on these trips, was a classics teacher, and she tends to brighten up when we're visiting parts of the former Roman Empire. In the South Pacific, her rule for a good holiday seemed to have been broken, I pointed out that the Romans had never been to Polynesia. Ah, yes, she replied, but they would have liked to. For most people, the fun of travel begins early in life. As the youngest of three children brought up in Oxfordshire, miles from the sea, holidays were a long car journey away in our Morris 8. Overloaded with supplies, on steep hills we had to get out and push. A cottage on the Dorset coast, without mains water and electricity, but within scrambling distance of a deserted pebble beach, brought us close to heaven. After dark, you could see the tiny lights of glowworms. The wild area leading from our cottage to the sea was defended in the war with concrete military roads, and they were still there festooned in barbed wire. Amid acres of brambles on secluded patches of grass, we discovered the skulls of dead rabbits. Our greatest joy came from the tank traps just behind the beach, water-filled ditches built to stop German tanks making their way inland. Along these little canals among the reeds, we paddled our makeshift rafts and dreamt of pirates and the Spanish Main. After all the restrictions of the lockdown, people are now bursting to get out. 
they won't be as interested as they were in finding a quiet place where they can read and cook for themselves. They've done quite enough of that already. They'll want something different as well as safe, and that may be harder to find this year. One of my regular holidays involves sailing with my brother in a small chartered yacht. Sometimes the best trips have included an element of danger. Things going wrong, like losing the anchor or running out of fuel. Well, we're hoping to be off the coast of Cornwall again this summer, heading back to the Helford River. This is a chart to give you some idea of what it's like. <laughs> I'm quite sure that like in those blissful days in Dorset all those years ago, it'll be more than a holiday. It'll be an adventure. Hope you managed to get a change. Until next time, cheerio.